All right, so I did a thing. I did a thing. Let me go get said thing. PRS bag, SE. And in said bag is this. This is an SE24 Custom. And it is the first proper guitar that I have gotten for myself. Um, say what you may about, you know, not quite sure how the uh, analogy goes with um, cobblers and shoes, but I might make guitars, but every single guitar that I have ever bought for myself has cost me not even 200, ever. Um, the West Tone cost me 99 euros. The Strat that I use, the Grape, that was gifted for me, but that cost about 40 bucks. The Pine Guitar cost 80 bucks. The Wrath cost parts. And yeah, all guitars previously owned have not cost me almost any bucks. And this is the first time that I spent money on an honest, honest to goodness, proper, uh, bigger brand guitar. Now the reason why I got a PRS is mostly to do with the fact that this is something that I always assumed that I would never possess and never put my own sort of money into and definitely couldn't justify buying myself a PRS at any point. But um, this is now a technically a gift from my late grandmother, which makes me love this that much more. It's really strange. I spent a very long time contemplating between this and the Mark Holcomb um, signature. Because quite honestly, the Mark Holcomb PRS SE, that is exactly, like specs wise, it looks exactly like the guitar that I would absolutely love and adore. I kept on playing it, it sounded great, but there was, no matter what, there was something, something about it that just, I don't know, bugged me or felt somewhat like a compromise on some level. I noticed that I kept on picking this up, the one that I didn't think that I would really enjoy all that much in comparison to the other guitars that I tried today. But whenever I pick this guitar up, it just made me feel happy. And it, it feels amazing, it feels really great, and it just, I mean, look at it. It's incredible. It looks incredible. So that's a very, you know, long-winded way of going about things, about what this video is actually gonna be about. I only came up with the idea for the video now because now I got this. Essentially, look at it from the point of view of might be getting your first guitar, or your first proper guitar, like me, or just have a new guitar, but you wanna make it suit your needs and your playing and whatever you want out of an instrument. So in this video, we are going to go through setting up a brand new instrument that you have bought so that it plays better to your liking. For instance, already to begin with for this, the string height on this is very, very high compared to what I usually like. Um, we're gonna go through the entire checklist, have a look at everything, screws tightened, anything looking amiss, any scratches, dents, or anything else that might concern, you know, a new purchaser of a new guitar. Um, it does have a push pull and I just pulled the knob off. So we're gonna also have a look at how to fix that type of issue because this feels very loose. And there is a way of tightening that. I think this is gonna be a two part thing. So first it's just gonna be general quick fixes that you can do at home very easily. It's just more about setup to get it playing much better for your liking. And then the next part will be a little bit more upgrade oriented because I am probably gonna switch out the pickups for this. We're gonna see what the electronics look like inside, whether I need to switch those out. I haven't decided on the nut. Usually I don't like plastic nuts or, ooh, graphite nut. We'll see if I change that or I don't. But I intend to keep this instrument for a very, very, very long time. I look forward to um, what this can do. Okay, so part one is going through basically anything and everything to do with the guitar. Basic 
um, as it were, quality control at a normal factory as I'm assessing the damage, so to speak, and figuring out what needs to be done. So I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth than many will because of uh, being a luthier and all. And I've already looked through the entire guitar, like really to the minute detail, um, which you'll see <laughs> very soon. And uh, I have to say, I am so impressed. I am absolutely impressed with a guitar of this price range being this quality is incredible because I have seen, whoops, sorry about that. I have seen guitars that are much more expensive than this and far worse quality. And uh, let's just dive into it, shall we? Um, from the point of view of a new owner of a new guitar, the things that I wanna fix on this are very minimal. I'm gonna give it a nice little polish up. Um, I'm gonna tighten up this knob because it comes off and I am going to lower the action. It is currently way too high for my liking, but that's the setup at the store. This isn't the setup that you get straight out of the factory, although it was fairly similar um, for the Mark Holcomb that I tried, which was straight out of the box. But yeah, this is way too high of an action for my liking. I usually like to have this, have the string height at about 1.5 mil. So I'm gonna bring that down and yeah, <laughs> remove the plastic covers from this. But I'm gonna do that after polishing up. Another thing to check is how the nut has been cut. So if you fret the third and then press down the first fret, what you're looking for is about the same amount of pressure needed to fret the first fret as you would get normally on any other fret just by itself. But yeah, so fretting the third and then pressing down, um, there really, really isn't much that needs to be done here. The knot seems to be very well made and I'm thoroughly impressed. So let's go over the things that I found that um, I found are lacking, which are very, very, very minimal, first and foremost. So here, let's see if I can even capture that on camera. See the tiny, tiny little lines that are going across the grain that way? Those appear to be router marks from the CNC. There is a little bit, uh, at first I thought that was a dent right there, where my finger is, but that is actually a bubble in the lacquer. But I had to really search for something like this. Here on the tail end of the guitar, you can see the little dark dots in the binding. Those are places where the stain has seeped through the masking up and it's literally just in that area. Something fairly similar can be found here on the horn. Uh, there, at the very edge, you see that there is a little bit of a lighter shade in the maple. That would be where wet sanding or flat sanding this has gone through the uh, coat and revealed the bare wood underneath. You can see there's a little bit of discoloration. The fret ends, I am thoroughly impressed by considering the quality or the price bracket for this instrument. There's some tiny, tiny file marks here and there, but nothing overly major at all. And honestly, the nut is extremely well done. A little bit of polishing compound left, left in that corner right there. And as I said, this is a very nitpicky of me looking at this from a luthier standpoint, trying to look for mistakes in a guitar. And literally, that is, now I'm filming this a little, a couple of days after actually getting this guitar. Uh, as you might have noticed, my shirt has changed a little bit. Yeah, so I've had a couple of days to thoroughly look this over all over the place. And those are the only things that I've found. That's insane. This, this guitar is so, so carefully looked after from the quality control perspective that it's, I have to applaud the workmanship on this. It's, it's incredible, it's really it is. 
Um, let's have a look at the back cavities. I've already looked at the electronics a little bit, uh, but I haven't looked into the tram cavity. So we're gonna have a look at that because I do need to switch out or I need to put in some dampener in there because Sorry for the camera angle, that was just me doing this. And I hope that the audio picked that up, but you can hear the springs vibrate and make noise when you do this. So I'm gonna dampen that out with some foam underneath the springs, so it's, they're not gonna make any more noise and that won't be carried through when playing through an amp. So let's have a look, flip this over and have a look. So starting off with the electronics, the electronics cavity is very, actually pretty nicely done. All the solder points, they look very clean. The wiring in general looks very clean. I can't really fault anything in here. At some point, I might change these out to something new. Probably when I put new pickups in, I'll have them change to something else, but yeah, very nice work. Um, tram cavity, not much to say. It's, it, it is what it is. And yeah, I'm just gonna be putting some foam underneath here to stop from these um, making any noise. There's a little bit of polishing compound left over underneath the plate, but nothing that actually sticks onto the surface. So yeah, um, yeah, color me impressed. This is quite an instrument. That, that is uh, not that nice, but yeah, like I said, these are tiny, tiny, minuscule things in comparison to the larger picture. Those are my, my fingerprints. We're gonna polish this up so it'll look nice and be a little better protected with the polish that I use. So yeah, um, let's get cracking, I guess. Okay, now before we get too far into it, what I'm gonna do first is actually adjust the action because right now it is very, very high in comparison to how I usually like it. So let us try to accommodate for a little bit better of an action for myself. So we're gonna bring this down a little lower. Um, might need to loosen these, a scooch. Now, I thought about blocking off the tram, because I don't really use it, but instead I'm just gonna, there. There we go, all right. That's looking quite a bit better. Then when I tighten this back up, that should mean that I get that nice low action that I'm after. Okay, everything looks good. Um, I can't really screw the screws down too hard because there is a little lip. So if I screw all the screws completely in, it's gonna lift the back end of the bridge. That's not something I want. All right, I'll take away the strings and we'll affix the uh, foam that I have. All right, I've now loosened the strings and I'm still gonna do that some more before removing them. And I've loosened the springs on the back just so that we don't have any tension anywhere where we don't want it. Another good way of doing this is uh, if you wanna keep your floating tram, you can put a piece of card stock or something underneath the bridge so that you don't get it pressing into the top and possibly ruining the uh, clear coat there, but I'm not too fussed about that. All these are loose, so I can just without any detriment to the bridge itself because it is, it's fairly loose. It's always horrifying, I know, looking at somebody snipping all of the uh, strings but if you don't do it at full tension you're you're completely fine and if your guitar is built properly that won't make it explode either which is what 
so many people are always concerned about when uh, snipping off strings. It's not good practice, but it's not gonna damage your instrument either. I believe this had nines on it, and I'm gonna put tens on it just because of my preference and playing style and what I got this guitar for. Strings are off and I'm not going to remove the plastic just yet. I want to polish that up first, but let us check everything else. I wonder if I even have the right scale lengths for this. Yeah, that will do. All right, so there is, well, there is the perfect amount of relief on this, which is just very, very, very tiny bit of relief, which is perfect, which means it should probably play pretty well. But what I do want to do is the, the frets do look nice. They're in a basic factory polish, but I want them to be shiny, so. I'm going to mask off the fretboard and then polish up the frets. So I'm polishing compound and a buffing wheel on my treble okay. just to get an even nicer finish. Essentially, the reason why you'd kind of want to polish your frets is that the less that there is friction, the much easier it is to play. So if there's any scratches in your frets or dents or whatnot, well, dents you can't get away with um, polishing up, but nonetheless, a very nicely polished up fret is has much less friction on it. So will, to that end, feel nicer to play, feel smoother to play. Um, if you don't have access to a Dremel and a polishing wheel or whatnot, you can, however, get fretboard or fretboard, fret polishing rubbers. Now, these are the, these are actually the old crimson ones. They come in very coarse, coarse, medium, fine, and super fine, which essentially lead up to a pretty much factory type polish. Um, you can go overboard and crazy with it, like I will, and use some chrome polish to really bring them up to scratch, and you can do that with just a paper towel and polishing compound and just buff it out. Um, but it's faster, faster for me to just use a Dremel to do the same trick. Um, this isn't something that you have to do whenever you get a new instrument, um, but I'm being a bit persnickety about it, so that's what I'm going to do. And I guess the whole aim of this video is to kind of show how good you can make even a very well set up instrument um, from the very get go straight out of either the box or from the store where you bought it from. But a little bit of elbow grease, TLC you'll get this to somewhere completely new and really make it that much better of an instrument for you to play. It's the little things. Um, and quite honestly, it's fairly therapeutic to do this. But also, these are the type of things where learning how to do just your basic maintenance, which is just polishing up frets and oiling the fretboard and adjusting the action, that goes a long way into the upkeep of your instrument in the long run, whenever you need to adjust something and adjusting, you know, truss rod. There we go. So I dropped the scalpel and I put a little hole into the lacquer there. Oh man, I haven't had this guitar for a week and I've already put a nick in it. That's really freaking annoying. 
you know, I can only blame myself for that one. But yeah, you don't need to see me um, mask up the entire fretboard here, so I'm just gonna skip ahead, skip to the good part. So while I might be using a Dremel to do most of the work, I'm just gonna show you the two different examples of doing it by hand. So for just a really quick polish, I'm pretty sure that the Superfine will do you just fine. Um, you could get, just for your, you know, once in a while when changing strings, polishing up the frets, you could get yourself a fine and a super fine and you will be just fine. And uh, basically, it's just as simple as this. There. And that's pretty much really, really good already. But I like I do like to go a step further and polish these up a little bit more. So I'll show you the difference that this chrome polish that I have uh, will do, or metal polish. And just a little bit there. And this one is the one that we just used the rubber on. This is one that we did not use one on. I have so much of this stuff, I'm just gonna spread it for the next ones. Usually I do three frets at a time, but I'll just show you two real quick. And just with a normal paper towel, rub on the polishing compound, and then start buffing away. And just a little bit of elbow grease later, you're left with really nice shiny frets. You know what? I'm actually gonna do this by hand. It's not taking that long, and I'm not in a rush. So, yeah, there we have it. Supremely nicely polished up mirror shine frets. So now the frets are nicely polished up. The next thing that I'm gonna do is oil the fretboard. Now, oftentimes you might find that the fretboard is a little dry straight out of the box on some brand instruments or guitars in general. Um, so it's good practice to all the fretboard when you put the new strings on anyway. However, this one, <laughs> once again, this has been a full surprise, but the fretboard is in mint condition. But you know, the shop that I bought this from, they have their own setup guys, so they could have already maintenanced that a little bit ago but this has been kept in a very good shape. You don't want your fretboards to kind of dry up too much because that might induce some cracking in the fretboard, which would be horrible. Um, this is a rosewood board. Rosewood already is a fairly oily wood to begin with, but it looks great once it gets oiled up and is nicely conditioned. So that's what we're gonna do. And again, it's just a matter of applying oil and wiping it away, or wiping away all the excess and buffing it down with some paper towel. So definitely something you can do at home and definitely something that does improve your guitar and keeps it in good condition for longer. What I am gonna use is the Dunlop Deep Conditioner. I've actually found this to be really nice in comparison to some other products, products out there. It does the trick very well. You can use lemon oil. I've kind of been moving myself more and more away from some lemon oils, but uh, this, this uh, deep conditioner has been very nice. It's also a very handy bottle and you'll see what I mean very soon. Now, this Dunlop bottle has a little felt pad at the tip of it, so you can just turn around, nothing will leak through, but helps 
the application process. So here we go. Now when rubbing off all the excess oil, you're kind of going to be rubbing it into the wood some more. And at the same time, cleaning up your frets. All right, I'm gonna let that be for just a second. In the meantime, we can have a look at the volume pots. Now, as I already mentioned before, this comes off fairly easily, but there's a very quick fix. Another thing I usually like to check is if the washers are nicely tightened up and they're not loose, because that would be annoying. Okay, the volume is great. I'm gonna fix the tone knob just ever so slightly. So I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver, put it in the middle where there's that little gap and ever so slightly open that up. Not by much, but it's enough to kind of open it up for this to sit ever so slightly tighter. There. Yep, now it's not coming loose. And a very quick and very simple fix. Yeah, that's nice. All right, back to the fretboard. We're gonna start cleaning this up. So another piece of paper towel. I'm gonna fold it up so I have a tool. And then just buffing away all the excess oil. There's probably some polishing compound still coming off on the paper from the frets. And that is exactly what we want right now. We want everything to be nicely cleaned up so you don't get gunk on your hands. And also this process kind of helps with, you know, we had masked up the fretboard. So if there's any residue left over from the masking tape, this will surely take care of that. You want to remove all, the, all of the excess oil from the fretboard. Now, I'm usually not the biggest fan of rosewood fretboards, but man, this is a very pretty board. And you know, my, I mean, there's nothing wrong with rosewood fretboards. It's just, I'm allergic to the dust, which is actually very common. Um, in a lot of people. But uh, due to that, I don't like working with it. But I mean, if it's already on a guitar, then I don't really need to worry about the dust off it. All right, gonna finish up this buffing down and I believe then we are ready to put in the new strings. So see you in a bit. Haha, -ha, I spoke too soon. So. Before we move on to the new strings, I wanna polish up the guitar as well. So the strings would kind of be in the way of polishing up the top. And I wanna do this before I take the plastic off the pickups as well. So I'm gonna apply some auto glim. So this is just super resin polish for, meant for usually cars. And it's gonna protect the lacquer on here. And then just with a microfiber cloth, rub that in. Yeah, getting into places like this would be somewhat annoying if the strings were on. And yeah, you could do this by taking off all of the uh, hardware and whatnot, but I'm not gonna do that now. Instead, I'm just gonna clean up all the gunk afterwards. There we are. Yeah, might as well. Knobs as well. Sure, why not? All right, I'll wipe away all that excess stuff there. That's why I didn't take the plastic off yet. All right, so then it's just a matter of polishing everything up or buffing everything down, I should say. And it's always good to have good light so you can check up against the light to see if there are spots that you've missed. Oh yeah. 
Get that knob a nice polish there. That one as well. Nice. And we're gonna do the rest of the guitar after all the strings and everything else are on as kind of the last thing that we do. Yeah, that looks great. Now for the really nice therapeutic part. Oh yeah. There we go. Time to put in the new strings. So I'm using NYXL 10 to 52s. I just really like, oh, they used to have a sticker with these. No more sticker, huh? Well, that sucks. But yeah, so I really like NYXLs because they last longer and they sound really great. Silver and purple. So I'm just gonna pass all these strings through and then pull them through the tuners afterwards. Diodario also had the nice different colored ball lens which make restringing a breeze. Now, because I changed to a thicker string gauge, there might be a chance that I have to do some not slot filing. And we'll get to that in just a bit. There we are. Another thing I check is if the washers on the tuners need to be tightened, which they do. So I'm gonna do that. Okay. Just making sure that nothing rattles while playing. And yeah, it's really just a matter of these really, really small little things that can make quite a big difference. Because imagine putting on the strings, then plugging in, playing around and then hearing some chattering noises from the headstock because the washers are vibrating. It's never fun. Much better. I also check that these roughly feel the same. These are a bit tighter, but I think that's fine. All right, there's many different schools and methods to re-stringing a guitar, but as you saw there, that is my method. And I'll do it slowly. For the next one. So, pulling the string through into the nut slot, then twice around pushing down the windings, putting through the strings, or putting through the string end, pulling it tight, and then tightening while keeping tension so that the string wraps around the bottom here and pushes those two windings that I first put on up, which locks this into place. And I'm only gonna, only gonna properly tighten everything up once all the strings are on. Of course, when we get to the thicker strings, I might do less winding, you know, like pre-winding. Definitely for the thinner strings, I like to do this. Just to have some winds on there. If something were to go wrong, I have a little bit of extra room. But also this just kind of locks the strings in place. Yeah, the <laughs> bridge is still moving because the springs are fairly loose on the back, so let me just tighten those up a little bit. Oh, we forgot to add the foam. So let's do that now. Whoops, so I'm gonna loosen these up. 
and we'll add the foam. But hey, at least we figured this out at this point instead of at the point where I put on all the strings. So yeah, and just move those aside ever so slightly. So what I'm gonna do is cut a piece of foam, probably somewhere around up until here. And this, this foam is just something that came with uh, Schaller tuners. So it's funny the things you'll find useful. Okay, these springs really don't want to be coming out, so remove this for now, seeing as the springs are not attached anyway. There we go. Then reposition the claw there. And tighten her up. All right, there we go. So now, they're making far less noise, which is exactly the way I want them to be. Great, fantastic. All right, let's keep moving on. So I'm gonna string this up and let's see what happens. All right, so um, I need a pick. I got a great pick from my nephew. Tunes equals life. Fun. Uh, anywho, yeah, so the strings sit very nicely in the uh, nut slot there, so I don't think I actually need to do any adjustment on that front, which is nice. Now let's get to tuning so that I can do all the rest of this setup. Now, what this was also missing was intonation. So we're gonna do that as well. A little bit of a stretchy stretch. Some people say that this is completely unnecessary, but I like to do it because it eliminates all that extra wiggle from either end. I'm wondering what I should, well, tune this half a step down. So I have in mind something that I'm gonna play on it. The strings are still gonna have a little bit of play in them. Probably still out of tune. Somewhat. This was actually pretty close. There we go. Hold on. Bring it up. There we go. Now that is nicely uh, set up. But, however, our action is still quite high. So let us open up the bag of PRS goodies here. So this E string is pretty much as low down as it can go. Um, I am gonna bring it up slightly so I get it to, up oh, wrong direction, there we go. So as this is my guitar, I'm gonna go for my preferences on these things. So a mil and a half, from fret to the bottom of the string. There. Still gonna do final action setup once I have the intonation correct. But this is a place to start. And <clears throat> for the pickup height, I usually fret the last string or I usually fret the last fret and also adjust so that I'm a mil and a half from there so I can actually afford to bring this up a little bit there no to my liking that is far enough away or close enough away wow this can really go down. There, yeah, perfect. Mm, yeah, it's pretty good. Well, let's check for the feel. I need to do it like that. I need to go get my strap. Oh, 
out of tune already, but that's because I adjusted the action. Now you might notice that I haven't polished up the rest of it yet, and that is on purpose because I want to do that last. So let's just put on a strappy strap here and do intonation. Now, intonation is something that you want to do standing up or in a playing position, I should say. Let's get to tuning. These have a Phillips head. There we go. Nope, not that one, this one. Except I will need this, because it fits better. Right, so once again, let's tune up and always tune up to the right note. So essentially I have this at drop D, tune down half a step. So drop C sharp or drop D flat, whichever you prefer. Right, let's check. So the way to check intonation is your open string and then your 12th, so the octave. Now you want that to be the same note. As for me, it's D sharp and D sharp. Then A sharp. That needs a little bit of adjustment. It's a little sharp, so I need to bring it back. Don't need to turn too much. There we go. Essentially what you're doing with adjusting the saddles is you're shortening or lengthening the um, scale length, essentially, on that string. F sharp. F sharp, great. Funny, this is intonating better half a step down than it was in standard tuning. Wow, really, did I only need to fix one? Apparently. All right, sweet, let us plug that into an amplifier and hear what it sounds like. So I'm going through my orange micro terror. Oh, it's not plugged in because I don't have power. There we go. Let's let that warm up a little bit. And split. So guess what happened? My camera ran out of memory. Yay, hooray. All right, I really don't know how much more battery I have left in my camera, so we're gonna make this quick. There we have it, a brand new guitar and now set up the way I like it. So all we did was polish up the frets, or the fretboard, lower the action, put some dampeners behind the springs, um, made the knob stay in place, and intonation. I mean, it now intonates better than it did previously in standard tuning, I just tuned it half a step down and it intonates perfectly. I mean, of course, if you wouldn't have to do, if you would have to do more intonation, then that is something that you should do at this point too. Um, really important thing to check so that your guitar will actually play in tune. But uh, yeah, I am very, very happy. There's still some polishing compound there that I need to uh, buff away. That cleaned up very nicely. It was already very clean and yeah, as I've stated many times before in this video, I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with the quality of this SE. It is incredible. Um, I'm finding no fault with it, and it sounds freaking amazing, even through just a micro terror, but I've plugged it into my computer as well, and it sounds, and my uh, plugins that I use and stuff like that, it, it sounds great. Man. All right, so looking back on the footage, my camera died there for a little bit. Well, more so it ran out of battery. Well, you didn't get get to hear a proper like demo of the thing, but it works, it plays nice now, that's the thing. Um, cut off half of my face on the previous shot there, but you know, it is what it is when I don't have anything to kind of, I don't have a point of reference. Um, or any 
monitor screen type of thing. I can't flip the back, back of the screen to face me. Be that as it may. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it and if there's more that you wanna see, hit like, click the notification bell, and that will both help the channel out immensely, but also will notify you whenever I put out new content. If there's any kind of videos that you would want to see in the future, comment down below, let me know what you think and what would you kind of want to know more about and I will try and make a video on that. Uh, at the very least, I will answer your question if it's something that I've already done a video on or if it's fairly straightforward that I can answer in text. Thank you very much for um, watching and subscribe, definitely, to see more. Um, I am gonna go drink some coffee now because I can tell that my brain is really not functioning. And for all of those people who got this video, got this far, uh, have bought a new guitar, have now set it up according to their own spec, go and shred. Uh, or if you don't shred, go and play some nice tunes. Take care. What the hell is that? I'm fist bumping the camera? I don't know. Toodaloos.